You stop. I got one more minute before we got to start. So one more round. Oh, you're not Bradley. You're shorter. You got less hair. All right. That's Roy. I'm sorry, Roy. We got 30 seconds until kickoff, though, Roy. All right. Good. We'll get started in a second or two here early while people come on in. Leslie, are you ready for this morning? Yes, sir. All right. We're going to get started here 30 seconds early. I noticed a couple weeks ago, and they've all the stuff, all our services are back on, on YouTube now, and I was looking at all the YouTube ones, and a couple weeks ago, I went way over. Not you, know, you. you. Not you. Some of the choir said they noticed that, too. Anyway, it's good to be with you guys today, and God's got some great things. It's a fantastic week here at Berks United Methodist Church, and I am glad to be with you guys. I'm Pastor Brian, and you are? I'm Leslie Daniels. All right, good. We know our names. That's good. Now... Uh, first off, tonight the youth have something fun planned, is that right? They do. We are going to the house of Kim and Michael to have a pool party. So if you need directions, let me know. That's everyone in 6th grade to 12th grade. Come see us and come out for a cookout and lots of fun outdoor games. You don't want to miss it. All right, all right. Now, some of you have been asking a question in your mind. At least one of you had the guts to ask it out loud. What is that thing on your face, preacher? If y'all didn't know real well by now, I have to have a few toys to help me see. And these toys help me see things. Like there's people in the balcony up there. Hello up there. I can see you one at a time up there. So if you so the good news, if one of you is sleeping over here, I can't see you over here sleeping. So the good news, I can only see one person at a time with these cool glasses, but they do help me see. Uh, when people come up to me and ask me that at stores and stuff, Leslie, I look in there, I look at them deep like this here. And I say, I, with these glasses, I can see into your soul, Leslie, and I can see if you went to church last Sunday. And depending on the look in their face, I can say, and I even can tell if you, if you even remember what the preacher said. Now, the question is, can Leslie remember what she said? Next Sunday is not the question mark. Now, I tell the kids, I'm watching the Disney Channel. Don't bother me. I'm enjoying the show. But God used it for great things. If nothing else, when I run you down, now you know why because I didn't see you. The good news, except for one person in our church who I've already put my foot in my mouth with this morning, you all look 10 years younger when I wear the glasses, okay? <laughs> one lady I said 10 years older by accident. Anyway, <laughs> now that I can see though, there's some great things out in the Narthex, aren't there for us? What are, what are, what those book, what are all those books out there for, Le Le Leslie Daniels? We have books for you all. We gotta and, read? Uh, oh, you're giving us homework? Well, it's spiritual work. Ooh. Yeah. So September 10th is an important date in the life of our church when we kick off 28 days of prayer together as a church. And the prayer guides are a day by day book, and they're out in the entryway in the narthex. You can have one for $7.50. All right. Thank you. All right, let's join together now in a call to worship. How about that? What about baptisms? Oh, that's right. Thank you. That's what she's here for. She's making sure I do everything right. Next Sunday, we have a really awesome Sunday. We get to do communion for all of us. And we have already two people who will really want to be baptized. If you've never been baptized and say, this is the Sunday for me, we'd love to have you join us. Okay? All, all right. right. Because God's working. Okay. Um, let us join together in the call to worship. And now that I have my cool glasses, I can actually see them. Cool glasses. So, let's go. Let's see what it says up there. We are gathered here to be God's church. We are here to celebrate God's presence with us. We are here to worship, to learn, to love God and others. We are here to see what most spirit our heart and to see justice. justice for all. We praise Jesus together, crucified and risen the source of all our hope and peace. Amen. Amen. Let's sing some songs here. Please rise as you're able. And join us on page 454 of the hymnal for Open My Eyes That I May See. Open my eyes that I may see Glimpses of truth thou hast for me Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God, thy will to 
You may be seated, and as always, it's my pleasure to have our choir for an anthem with Mr. Roy. Oh, how happy are they who the Savior obey. This month, we've been looking at the things that we as Berks United Methodists say are firm to what we believe. We talked about Jesus, talked about the Bible, talked about faith. This morning, we're talking about church. And it's appropriate for this morning for us to use our affirmation of faith, the one from the Canadian church. Several years ago, all the Protestant churches in Canada came together and said, let's form one denomination because we're so spread out and let's work together. And in that process, they created this declaration of what they believe. As we declare this morning what we believe, these are some of the foundation things. So would you join me now? We are not alone. We live in God's world. 
We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come to Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and to serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. It's time now for one of the best parts of our worship service, the past and the peace. This morning I want to challenge you. I know some of you like to shake hands with 25 people. That's great. Maybe today you need to talk to one or two people and find out what God's been doing in their life this week. Let's stand and share the good news of Christ. What's that? Yeah. Kids, we got someone down there ready to go. Let's see what's going on this morning for children's time. Good morning, you guys. Do any of y'all know how to play the game of tag? Yes. Can you tell me how it works? Um, we have to um, we have to run away from the person that tags us. And what do you say when you tag someone else? Tag. Tag your friend. Yeah. What I'm trying to get here is playing the game of tag is like spreading the word of God. See, I can be the person that is it. And I can tell you about Jesus, or I can tell you about Jesus, or even you. And whenever I do that, I'm tagging you, and you're next. And I want you to go out, and I want you to tell someone else about Jesus. That makes them it. You're tagging them. In the Bible, in the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 15, he s it says, He said to them, Go into all the world. Preach the good news to everyone. 
That is what you are going to do when you tag the next person. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere. The Lord worked with them, and he backed up his word by the signs that went with it. Whenever you go to tell someone else about Jesus, Jesus is always going to be there with you and helping you spread the word as well. He's going to help grow every single one of their faith. Okay? <laughs> Can we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all these children here. And we just pray that you give them a good week and help them spread the word of God with everyone else around them. In your son's name we pray. Amen. How thankful we are this morning that we serve a God who promises to hear our prayers, our cries for help. And so this morning we come before him just as we are, with our needs and our praises and our thanks, and we lift up others who are in need. So I invite you this morning, let's pray together. Lord God, you are wonderful and marvelous in all that you do. We praise you for who you are, that you are great and awesome and powerful, and yet you are gentle and stoop down to hear even the cries of our hearts. Lord, we're thankful this morning for the salvation that we have through Jesus, your son, that you've given us forgiveness of sins because we know this week there have been times we haven't said things that we're loving. We haven't thought things that we're loving. There were loving things to do that we didn't do. Father, for all the ways in which we haven't lived up to the image of Jesus, your son, we ask forgiveness in his name and thank you that you give us the grace and the strength to do differently from this moment forward. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit that reminds us that you are alive and working within us. Father, we pray because you are the great physician and ask for healing for those who have need of healing in their bodies, their minds, their souls, their spirits. We lift up to you those who are grieving losses today. We remember the people in Hawaii who have suffered a a terrible tragedy and loss of home and belongings and loved ones. Have mercy, Lord, and bring your comfort, we pray. Lord God, we pray for our church. We ask that you continue to lead us in the ways that are pleasing to you and that we might live into the vision that you have for us. Teach us how to pray, Lord, together and to believe you for great things. Lord God, speak to us today in this time with you. Speak to us through your word, through the music, through one another, and strengthen us as followers of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. Please rise as you're able for the reading of scripture. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 23 through 25. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Also from James chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. 
Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Elijah was as human as we are, and yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. Then when he prayed again, the sky went down, sent down rain and to the earth and began to yield its crops. My dear brothers and sisters, if someone among you wanders away from the truth and is brought back, you can be sure that whoever brings the sinner back from wandering will save that person from death and bring about the forgiveness of many sins. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. As we get ready to take up the offering this morning, I think of a couple of thoughts this morning. I remember my sister was like five years old. She came home from church one Sunday and said, Dad, every week the preacher says, tonight we're going to give up our tithes and offerings. I haven't seen a single guy take his tie off and throw an offering plate yet. <laughs> Years later, Dean and I went to France. <coughs> and as our habit, we went to worship. Now, I don't speak any French, so it was a really interesting service for me to say the least. And then we discovered half of it was in Latin, so my poor wife, who speaks French and Spanish, was kind of clueless too. But we got, it was a great chance to worship God, even though we could not speak what was going on. One of the things they did, they took up an offering. And I have yet to figure out what they did, because Dee and I put more money in the plate than anybody else did that Sunday. It's like, they all just put in little coins. So I don't know how they did their offering there. Some of you may have the same thought here. Have you ever noticed the plate never comes to the preachers? What gives with that? Well, part of it is I give, we give online because that way I don't forget because I have other things to do on Sunday morning and I, I get things all confused and I'm like, that's too important for me to miss on. So we give online. Some of you all write one big check, check every year. Thank you very much for you using your IRA that way and saving yourself money and giving more to the church. I praise God for that. But however you give, whether it's every week, whether it's online, it's a big check every year, Thank you for your giving to this church because the ministry of this church makes a, it makes a difference, the ministry of this church. And we are doing great things for God. This week we're putting together a list of the leaders of the church. Do you know what the biggest committee in our church is? It's the Committee on Missions. Jim Knight, I count out, you have 20 members of your committee. Good luck. This church cares about doing great things. And because of that, I invite us now to pray. Lord, when your church started, your people gave so generously that everybody had all their needs met. Lord, we pray today that you would come be a part of our church family. And whether we give once a year, whether we give online, or whether we give, Lord, in all sorts of different ways, Lord, we hear the call that our gifts to you are a declaration, Lord, of all the grace you have given us. And we support you, this church, because, Lord, it supports your work. Thank you, Lord, for doing all you have done. And now, Lord, use our offer this morning for your glory and your honor. Amen.
If you would please rise as you're able and join us on page 94 of your hymnal for praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. If you would remain standing and turn to page 337 of your hymnal for only trust him. If you would please remain standing for the reading of scripture. Our second scripture reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And the all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, 
met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who are being saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. All right, so this month we have been looking at what are the core values and beliefs of our church as a Christian church. And Pastor Brian has been sharing with us the first week about Jesus, what we believe about him, about faith, and how that helps us to access all the blessings of God, including our salvation and the Bible. And today we're going to talk about the church. And why is the idea of church important? And what does it mean to us? Um, I think a lot of you have a pretty good idea already. We were in a meeting with some of the leaders this week. We had some really good, good meetings um, to get to know Brian a little better and to talk about what our priorities are as leaders in the church. And the question came up about why do we, why do people come to church? In this day and age, we know that there are fewer and fewer people coming, but here you are this morning, and there must be a reason. And in this meeting, uh, there are some really good answers. The church is where we gather to praise and worship God. That would be true, right? Um, and I'm sure for each of you, there might be a, your own reason about why you're here this morning. Here's another one. I come because the church is my family. I like that one. And it's where we gather together to meet the needs of our community. So those are all good definitions of church and what it means to come to church. The word church um, has so many meanings, I think, because it has this cosmic and spiritual and wonderful idea, spiritual idea, that we are a group represented by believers all around the world, the church universal, which in the creed we use the word Catholic, but it means universal throughout the world. This thing that we believe was birthed by God, that it was his idea. And so in the scriptures, it has lofty meaning. We are called the bride of Christ, which to me means we're in preparation. We're being prepared and got, we're being got ready for when the bridegroom returns, which is Jesus, and we'll have full union with him when we go to live with him forever. So that's a beautiful thing. We're, the church in scripture is also called a house, a spiritual house. And Peter wrote that each of you are living stones in that house. Jesus is the cornerstone and we are built up into something, a spiritual entity that is a wonderful place for worship and service and fellowship. A spiritual house. And then you may be familiar with Paul's de um, description of the church as the body of Christ. Which, since Jesus no longer has a physical body here on earth, we become that. You and I each are a part of that body representing him still in the earth while he is no longer here. I may take this off, see if that helps. All right. So the lofty spiritual ideas of what it means to be the church. And then there are human 
definitions of the church. <laughs> Evidently, it's not the equipment. <laughs> human definitions, because we are all human, right? Maybe we can turn it down just a little. Maybe it's knocking on my face. I don't, really don't want to have to do that, but I will. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> Human definitions, because we are human beings, right? Okay, I'll give up on it. Going to the uh, pulpit mic. All right, I'll just leave this on. There was a young man, and he called his grandmother on the phone, and he said, Grandma, can I still be a Christian if I don't go to church? And I think that's a question that a lot of people have asked. So if we think on the passage from Hebrews that was read in the first scripture reading this morning, it talked about do not forsake the gathering or the assembling of yourselves together. And this verse has been used over the years by people to guilt young people into coming to church. Well, the Bible says, don't forsake yourselves assembling together. And what does that really mean? And so it's really kind of a nice idea when you think of assembling. In the Bible, the church, the word church means those who are called out to come together. So you're called out to come together for a common purpose. And to assemble means, you know, to come to gather together. And then I was looking up the word assemble and it had another meaning, which I really like too, which is like, what about an assembly plant? Like where they make trucks or you get a Lego kit and you assemble it, right? So you take the various parts and you put them all together and you come up with something really cool, like a Toyota truck, right? or a spaceship made of Legos. And so to me, assembly or assemble in that sense makes real sense with the body of Christ idea, right? Because Brian is not the church alone by himself. Susie is not the church by herself, Kim, but all together, each bringing our part that fits in there makes the whole, right? So what that also means is that if you aren't there at the gathering, it's like putting together a jigsaw puzzle and the last piece is gone. It's just not the same. And it doesn't make the whole picture of what we are meant to be. So I read this intriguing story about Chinese immigrants. This is from 2015. It was a newspaper article. There were Chinese immigrants, and they didn't speak English, and they're working long hours in restaurants, in the kitchens, in service industry. They work all day long, every day, and they found that they were, were lonely and felt isolated. So someone at a church in Manhattan, New York, in Chinatown, realized there was an opportunity there. And he started church on the phone. Monday through Thursday evening, Chinese people could call in on the phone, all on a party line together, and they study the Bible, and they sing together, and they ask questions about the Bible, and they share their needs and what they need prayers for and they find community in that. Is that a church? Kind of sounds like it makes the definition, right? So that the church being assembled and brought out together. So in thinking about this, there is an aspect in, where, in which when you share with one another your lives, your lives affect one another, hopefully for the good right? And so if you look in the passage in James that was read, it talks about if you are sick, call the doctor. 
Now, I'm not saying don't call a doctor, but there's something in there that we don't do very much. Call the elders of the church to come and pray for you. There's something else in that passage we don't do very much. Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. We need that. You know, the Roman Catholic Church has the confessional. And whatever your thoughts are about that, it serves a good purpose. Because when we're trapped in something, when we have habits that we can't break, when we keep failing over and over again, and we come to church and we're supposed to pretend that everything's okay and just say, how are you? Fine. And we aren't able to share with anyone that, hey, I'm struggling, pray for me. You don't have to give details. But each one of us, as a church, we need a place, whether it's in Sunday school or a small group or take me aside in the prayer chapel, we need a place where we can say, I'm struggling, I'm not okay, pray for me. Or I've been really sick, pray for me. And that is what the church is meant to be also, a place where we can do that, where we can be honest and be ourselves, and we need that. You know, a lot of times we don't want to share our weaknesses, right? Who wants to look weak in front of someone else? I'd rather look all put together. But I learned something um, in one of my nursing classes, I don't know what it was, but about muscle fibers. Do you know when someone goes to the gym and they lift weights, what happens is their muscle fibers break down. They tear and break. And what happens is after that, when they heal back together, they become stronger and bigger. But if you don't go through the process of allowing the weakness through the lifting, the strain of the weights, then you don't get the benefit of the strength in the healing that can come. And so that's, that's the benefit and that's what we need. You know, we heard Wednesday night um, some really heart-rending testimonies in the training about substance abuse and Narcan use um, to save lives on Wednesday night. And we heard a man give a testimony. And it was very striking to me that he said, if the people in my church had not loved me when I was messed up, if they had not continued to pray for me, even when I was doing wrong, I would not be alive today. And that's what the church meant to him. It meant literal physical salvation in this life. And we need to be that for one another and for those outside our church who don't have anyone to pray for them or love them. The foundation of John Wesley's movement was that when people came to trust in Christ, he put them in meetings of different sizes, and one of them was called a class meeting. And what you do in that meeting is you come and you share your life. Where I did well this week, where I'm struggling this week, you give account of yourself for the week, and then people encourage you and pray for you, and then you launch out into the week with new hope and new strength and your faith built up. Class meetings. He recognized that that's what we needed. Can you be a Christian without coming to church? I don't know. The flip side of it is that you can attend a church building, a church service, and not become a Christian. 
In my last church, I met with a man who said, I've been coming here 40 years, but I'm not really a believer. We need more than just Sunday morning. We need to be able to have that close fellowship. In the Acts 2 passage, it said they met together frequently from house to house. They listened to Bible teaching, not Bible teaching, but the apostles' doctrine and teaching, and they had fellowship. The word is quinonia. They had close bonds and ties because they shared their lives together, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it. And they had meals together. We had a wonderful meal last Wednesday evening. And they had shared the Lord's Supper together. And they gave to those who had need. And that basically was the early church right there. And as a result, thousands were added to their fellowship. That was the basics of what they did, though. Maybe you've heard some of the jokes about coming to church, like coming to church does not make you a Christian any more than going to McDonald's makes you a hamburger. <laughs> Have you heard that one? What about uh, coming to church does not make you a Christian any more than going in the garage makes you a car? We know that. So we know that we have need for small groups where we can share our lives together. I read this story, and I don't know what you think about this. It was, again, a few years back, but there was a young woman. She was 27 years old. She was not a churchgoer. She lived in Boston. She wakes up at 445 every morning to go to the gym and do CrossFit. CrossFit, if you're not familiar, I've never tried it. But I've seen people hauling tires down the road with chains, doing these exercise programs that are very rigorous. She, when she went to get an apartment, she made sure it was near her gym. 4.45 in the morning, she gets up every day to go to CrossFit. And she said, I can't imagine my life without it because of the people that I've met there. They are my family. There's laughter, love, and community. Why can't we be that, church? Family, laughter, love, community, sharing our lives to the point where it becomes so real and so exciting to us that we would even get up at 4.45 in the morning to meet together. I hope that God will form us into that. People are still looking for a place to belong, a place where they can connect with others. And we need that as human beings. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said that Christian community is not an ideal that we try to realize, but it is something that God created and offered to us in which we can participate, if we will. Can a person be a Christian without coming to church? Can a person survive in the wilderness alone? Maybe. But will they grow? Will they thrive? Will they really live in all the fullness of life and the enjoyment of it? I don't know. The bottom line is we need one another. And if you don't have a small group that you meet with, or people that you trust that you can share your life with, come see me and I'll help you get connected. Amen.
can please rise as you're able for our closing hymn, page 352, It's Me, It's Me, O Lord. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the preacher, not the deacon, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the preacher, not the deacon, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Standing in the need of prayer. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. May you go in peace and be the church. Amen. That you've already won. No matter what comes 
you've already won thank you no matter what comes my way i will overcome don't know what you're doing but i know what you've done well, i'm fighting a battle you've already won well, i'm fighting a battle already won Cause I'm fighting a battle but you've already won no matter what comes my way, I will overcome. Don't know what you're doing, but I know what you've done. Well, I'm fighting a battle. You've already won. 